So, very good evening uh, to you, dear brothers uh, in Christ. Uh, so, we thank our Lord uh, for giving it an opportunity to discuss his wonderful words of life. Uh, so, today, as uh, uh, we already informed, uh, we are going to study about uh, Jubilee. So, in the world, you see, there are a lot of Jubilees. If 25 years is completed, they will call it as a Silver Jubilee. If the 50 years are completed, they call it as a Golden Jubilee. If 75 years are completed, they call it as Platinum Jubilee. If 100 years are completed, they will call it as a Great Grand, uh, you see, Diamond uh, Jubilee. So, all these uh, Jubilees uh, are there in the world. Where did they get the idea of this Jubilee? If you see, they got all this idea from the Bible itself. So, does the Bible speak about Jubilee? Yes. Bible speaks about Jubilee in Leviticus 25, chapter 11 verse. Okay, read brother. A Jubilee shall that 50th year be unto you. You shall not sow, neither reap, but which that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it, of thy wine on rest. So here, if you say, it says, the 50th year shall be a jubilee year unto you. So, in the Bible, jubilee is there. But uh, how many jubilees, you see, how many years make a jubilee, if you see, the 50th year. The 50th year is called a jubilee in the Bible. So, not 25 years, but a year in the world, you know, the people were not able to make it up to the, you see, 50 years. So, that's, uh, some people... You see, they invented uh, this uh, something called as uh, Silver Jubilee, uh, 25 years. Uh. Dear brethren, uh, this Jubilee was actually given by God as a law to the people of Israel. How? See, we all know that uh, God had given 606 law to the people of Israel. In that one, God had commanded people of Israel that uh, they should work for six days and in seventh day, they had to rest. So, seventh day was actually a Sabbath day. You see, that is on the weekend, Saturday. You know, that's the reason uh, you see in the world today, uh, the seventh day Adventist. Uh, they are the Sabbatic people who observe the Sabbath uh, very clearly because they claim that this is the, you see, ten commandments uh, which God had given to Moses. Since uh, this has to be followed. Okay. Let us read where God had given about this law of working for six days and resting for the seventh day. Exodus 31, 15. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever does any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Yes. So in the Sabbath day, you should not work at all. You are supposed to take racism. So... Even today, you know, the seventh day Adventist, uh, the people, they don't want to the Sabbath day. Huh? They will take leave. And uh, you see, and anybody who does work, uh, they shall be killed. They strictly follow this one. You see, they don't even do any work. They don't even speak to each other, whatever they want to do, and write it on a paper and, you see, uh, do this one. But did God tell that you should not work anything at all? That if you do anything, even a little bit of work also you do, uh, you will be killed. Uh, you should be simply sitting in a corner. Uh. Now, why was this Sabbath uh, day given? You see, once what happened, uh, during the days of Moses, you see, when they were in the wilderness, a one person, he went and, uh, you see, to gather uh, the wooden sticks, uh, you see, to cook food. And uh, the people came and informed this one to Moses. Uh, and Moses, as per the command of the Lord, he called him outside and they made all the people of Israel to stone him to death. Hence, he was killed. Let us read Numbers 15, chapter 32 to 36. Numbers 15, chapter 32 to 36. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered his sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering his sticks brought him into Moses and Aaron and unto all, all the congregation. And they put him in ward because it was not declared what should be done to him. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall be surely put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with his stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with his stones. And he died as the Lord commanded Moses. 
You see, so he was killed as per the command of the Lord, told to call him outside and kill him. So everybody stoned him and you see he was uh, killed. No, uh, Jesus also worked on the Sabbath. We know that Jesus healed and did a lot of miracles on the Sabbath. We have a record of it in uh, Luke 6, chapter 6 to 10, where it says uh, that, uh, you see, on the Sabbath day, uh, Jesus healed a lunatic person who was having a withered hand that too in the temple, you see. So nobody was supposed to do any work. But that day, Jesus healed uh, that man and his hand was restored as the other. So that is given to us in Luke 6, chapter 6 to 10. Okay, so you can read later. And similarly, even Jesus did many other miracles, you see, mainly on the Sabbath day. But let us read this incident. Luke 13, chapter 14 to 15, brother. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Do hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? Ah, see, yeah, the Pharisees, Sadducees blame Jesus that you are doing healing on the Sabbath day. And that is the time that Jesus clarifies whether work has to be done or totally you should sit idle on the Sabbath day. And Jesus says, oh, you hypocrite, if your ox, uh, you see, uh, wants water, won't you give water on the day of the Sabbath? You will give. That means... There are some things that are permitted to do on the Sabbath. So, then uh, what uh, you see in the Bible, if you see, Jesus along with the disciples, uh, they gathered the grains, uh, you see, on the Sabbath day. And this one also was complained uh, by the Pharisees. And, Pharisees. and that is the time Jesus gave the explanation how he can perform this activity. Mark 2nd chapter, brother, 23 to 28, brother. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day. And his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have we never read what David did? When he had need and was in hunger, he and they that were with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar, the high priest, and did eat the so bread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priest, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Ah, so here... Uh... When Jesus was plucking the grains, the Pharisees, Pharisees and came and blamed him. That is the time that Jesus gave example of David. David also ate the thing which is holy. You see, the bread in the tabernacle by taking it from the priest. And that was done, you see, on the Sabbath. David then, and similarly, Jesus said the explanation why this law of Sabbath was given. Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man. And not that man was made for the Sabbath. What is the meaning of this one? The meaning of this one is that Sabbath was made for the sake of man. You see, that it may benefit man. Not that man was made for the Sabbath. That he should not do anything at all. Sit idle. And Jesus also said, the son of man is the lord of the Sabbath. Now what is this one? So, we will see these two explanations. First of all, how Sabbath was made for man? What is the purpose of this Sabbath? You see, when God gave the Ten Commandments, God knew the people of Israel were working very hard in Egypt. They had no rest at all. So, Pharaoh did not give any rest to them. You see, seven days continuously they had to work. There was no rest day for them. So, that is the time... And God called them to the promised land. So before getting into the promised land, God gave this law to them. Now what was that law? That is the law of the Sabbath. So that day, they had to take rest. So six days they can work. But the seventh day, they were not supposed to work at all. What work? 
what work they used to do on the six days, they were not supposed to do the same work used to sustain their life on the seventh day. But they have to take rest from what? Not from the day-to-day -day routine work, but from the activities which they used to do, you see, to earn their living bread. But instead of that one, they had to dedicate the day to listen to God's holy words. Let us read Acts 13, 27, brother. For they that dwelt at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. See, the voices of the prophets, which are read every day of the Sabbath, every Sabbath, you see, the whole congregation of Israel have to gather at the synagogues or near the temple, you see, and they have to listen to the complete law which God gave through Moses. So that day, they had to dedicate for the Lord. But, you see, the people of Israel, instead of dedicating this day to the Lord, they misused it. You see, God did not tell you, you should not work at all, dear brethren. That is the reason Jesus said, Sabbath was made for man, for the benefit of man, that we may abide in God's words and walk in God's words. Hence, you see, what happened during the most days, a man who was plucking, he was picking the sticks, he was called and stoned. What was he stoned? If you see, you see, that man, what work he was doing, that he actually did the previous six days also. So previous six days, he was doing the same work, you see, to continue his livelihood. You see, pick the, you see, wood and come to the house and use it for the personal purpose. That work was supposed to be stopped. He was not supposed to do that work on the seventh day. As he did the same work which he did for the six days, he was punished. Friends, there was nothing wrong in doing good you see, but the survival work uh, which a man was doing for six days, that was not supposed to be done on the seventh day. Hence, uh, Jesus, what did he say? That uh, son of man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. Why did Jesus say this one? Because, you see, there was rest for all Israel on the Sabbath day. But there was only one team, uh, one group of people in Israel who were working continuously. And who are they, if you see? These are the priest and the high priest who are working in the tabernacle. See, the Levi tribe never had any leave. The priest and high priest used to work continuously every day, day and night in the tabernacle. So similarly, who is our high priest? Jesus is our high priest. You see, so therefore Jesus said, the son of man is the lord of the Sabbath. Jesus is the lord of the Sabbath. So, Hence, there was no leave. Jesus could always do good. There was nothing wrong, no hindrance to do good on the Sabbath day. Okay. Now, this is about the law of the six days and the Sabbath. Okay. Now, let us come to the same thing in a larger view. When God gave the law of Sabbath to the people of Israel, He gave it in days and He also gave it in years. That means, the people of Israel had to work six years and the seventh year, the land was supposed to be given rest. They were not supposed to work on the seventh year. One year rest for the land. You see, read Leviticus 25th chapter, brother, 2 to 4. You speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give you, then sell the land keeper Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. So here, God says that the seventh year you should not do any work. That year is actually rest for the land. You know, Nowadays, will anybody do that one? They will give land for rest, rest for the land. That to one year, nobody will do. But God told you give. Actually, you see, there was actually a blessing 
in giving a rest of one year for the land. You know, if the land was continuously pruned, continuously cultivated, uh, you see, for agriculture, what would happen? Uh, the land would uh, lose its nourishment. Hence, God told, give the land a year rest uh, so it may regain all its, uh, you see, uh, main, uh, you see, uh, fertilizers and all those things so that uh, when you sow on the next coming year, it will give good results. Uh, this was the law of the Sabbath which God gave to people of Israel. Okay. Now, if they give one year rest, uh, what would the people eat? Uh? So God also made a law that he would bless the people of Israel in the sixth year so much that uh, it will be sufficient for them for the next three years. You see, seventh, eighth, you see, it will be blessing for them until the ninth year. Read Leviticus 25th chapter, 21 to 22. Mm. Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year and it shall bring forth fruit for three years and you shall sow the eighth year and eat of the old fruit until the ninth year, until the fruits come, and ye shall eat of the old store. Hey, what a blessing now. Until the ninth year, until the new fruits come, you will eat me eating the old fruit. Such abundant of blessings God had given to the people of Israel. And to additionally, you see, what God has told that, uh, seven years of Sabbath into seven Sabbatic years, how much it will come you see, it will come 49 years. You see, see, 7 years into 7 years. So, 7 Sabbath years into 7 Sabbath years will get 49 years. So, after this 49 years, the 50th year was called as the Jubilee. That 50th year was the Jubilee year. And that year, the people of Israel were not supposed to do any work at all. That was a jubilee. This is how God gave, you see, the law of the jubilee. Read Leviticus 25th chapter 8 to 10. And those shall number seven, seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. And the space of seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shall thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee Sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, in the day of atonement, shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land, and you shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man unto his possession, and you shall return every man unto his family. You see, so that year shall be the year of liberty. That year shall be a year of the jubilee, where you sound the trumpet. You see, and to all the inhabitants of the land, and every man shall return his possession, and every man shall return to his family, it will be a holy year. The 50th year was a jubilee year. You see, actually, you know, God had given the people of Israel, you see, very blessings. All the blessings were equally distributed to every people when they came out of the land of Egypt. You see, so everywhere well off. But unfortunately, you see, if they had lost uh, so many things and if they fell into death, God told, you see, that you should never lend any money for interest. You see, God had forbidden the people of Israel to give money for interest, but rather help them. Read Leviticus 25th chapter 36 and 37, brother. Uh, Take thou no osary of him or increase, but fear thy God, that thy brother may live with thee. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon osary, nor lend him thy victuals for increase. You see, God told you should never give money for interest. You see, nor lend him anything for thy increase. So God told you should never, you see, lend money for interest. Okay. If there is a any problem, then what to do? Oh, where to take money? Where to take help? So, how 
help was given in Israel where God had given the land to the people of Israel. It was equally distributed to each and every family. Each and every family had a land equally distributed. Everywhere were equal. No rich, no poor, nothing. So unfortunately, if somebody had some trouble, instead of taking money for interest, they were supposed to, you see, pledge their land. You're not supposed to sell the land. You see, underline it, they're not supposed to permanently sell the land. But uh, mortgage the land, uh, you see, on a certain condition. Read verse 23, brother. Huh. The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine, for you are strangers and sojourners with me. See, <laughs> land uh, is mine. You are not going to sell that land uh, because you are a sojourner. I had given this land, so this land is not supposed to be sold at all. So, what if there is a problem? So that time, God had told, don't send the land. But you place the land, see, from the person whom you are borrowing money. And how much money would the borrower pay, if you see, that was determined based on the number of years of the jubilee. If the jubilee year was very year, the amount lent was very less. But if the jubilee years was very quite far, he had so many years to take the yield and get the benefit. Then the money given, you see, money lent was more. So the money, you see, whatever was lent, whether it was more or less, it depended upon the number of years for the jubilee. You see, so that instead of, uh, you see, uh, taking uh, interest, he may gain from the benefit of the land, uh, from the fruitage of it and do agriculture cultivation and get uh, the money from it. That is how, you see, God had told and you should determine the value based on number of years of the Jubilee. Leviticus 25th chapter 15 to 16, brother. According to the number of years after the Jubilee, thou shalt buy of thy neighbor, and according unto the number of years of the fruits, he shall sell unto thee. According to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof, and according to the fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price for it. For according to the number of the years of the fruits, those he sell unto thee. Mm, you see, according to the number of years, those shall increase or decrease the value. That is how, you see, huh? they used to determine the value. If the jubilee was uh, quite near, then what? Uh, lesser value. But if the jubilee was quite far, the value of the land was more. Okay. Now imagine the... Uh, uh, what happens during the jubilee? You see, huh? you know, they were supposed to lend the land now, but during the jubilee, that land was supposed to be returned to the original seller. The person who gave the land was uh, supposed to get the entire land without any interest or without any, you see, taking money back. Uh, that land was supposed to be returned to the original owner. In this way, what happened, you know, the land which was God had given to the Israel was always remained intact. So nobody used to become rich and nobody used to become poor. But by the Jubilee year, everybody used to become equal. I read uh, Leviticus 25th chapter 39 and 41, brother. 39 to 41, brother. Huh? And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant, but as an hired servant, and as a sojourner he shall be with thee, and shall serve thee unto the heir of Jubilee. And then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family, and unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. See, even after selling the land, he is not able to sustain his life, then he is fall into more depth. And that is the time God says, you can sell yourself as a servant, but you cannot sell yourself permanently as a slave. Now, how here also, you see, if he sells himself as a servant, he is going to remain in the house only till the jubilee. As soon as the jubilee comes, immediately, what should happen is himsa? You see, that person should be set back free. And he used to be, he was supposed to receive wages and he was supposed to set back free on the jubilee. So, even the slave also had the opportunity to return back uh, to their house. Imagine, the 
So Jubilee, you see, before Jubilee, it was a very tough situation. The poor had to give everything, give their land, sell them uh, off, uh, you see, just to clear all their problems and all. Uh, and how the rich would be, they would be very happy to receive all these things and all, you see, and get them uh, as much uh, servants uh, as possible. But when the Jubilee came, the situation was opposite of then. You see, the people who rejoiced were sad because on the Jubilee, they had to give it back. You see, and the people who were poor, when the Jubilee was come, they actually rejoiced to get back all what actually they originally possessed. And you see, and God made a law that on the Jubilee, you should proclaim the Jubilee by sounding a loud trumpet. Read with her. Exodus, sorry, Leviticus 25th chapter 9 to 10. Then shall thou cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the 7th month. In the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land, and you shall hollow. And ye shall hollow the 50th year, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a Jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man unto its possession, and you shall return every man unto its family. See, you shall uh, cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to be blown. Why? Why the trumpet, trumpet has to be blown? Imagine, huh? you take money, it's very easy. To give back money, is it easy? No, what do the people do? If you're supposed to return the land, the money, the bond services, set them free. Is it so easy? No, they would escape here and there. They'll tell, come tomorrow, day after tomorrow, we'll see. Oh, I am on journey. You please come after one week. Oh, I have got some problem. I am not able to return you. All these excuses they will give you. No. That is the reason God told. You see, what you do was what? To, <clears throat> you know, to make this uh, very clear to the people. You see, uh, uh, God told, please, what? Uh, you proclaim it through the trumpet. If the trumpet is blown, what will happen? Now? There is a particular trumpet for the Jubilee. The people will understand, oh, this is a Jubilee. Then what should happen? Now? Then uh, liberty should be given. You see, there was no way of escape. It was publicly blown. The people who actually taken money, you see, who had become poor, they would have forgotten about the Jubilee. But once this trumpet was blown, it was a day of rejoicing for them. They were supposed to go free. Dear brethren, to make it very clear, to make the people aware of the liberty, the rights, this trumpet was born. See, such a wonderful law which God had to the, given to the people of Israel. But if you see, did the Israel observe this law? If you see, in the Bible, no. The people of Israel could not observe this law. You see, why? Because they tried to observe as many of 19 jubilees as much as possible. Once they were in a land of promise, in the land of Canaan. But 100%, uh, you see, perfectly, you see, they could not observe the law. So, what did God tell? One year you have to give rest to the land. Did the people of Israel give? No. Hence, God punished the people of Israel 70 years. So that their land, Israel land, the land of Israel can rest for 70 years. Read 2 Chronicles 36, chapter 20 to 21. Mosam brother, hope you are reached, hope you can read. Yeah, yeah, brother, I just reached at my room. Okay, I'll read. Okay, you are comfortable, okay? Yeah, I'm I'm full comfortable. Thank you for, you have given me so wonderful time. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, brother. God bless. 2 Chronicles 36, chapter, verse 20 and 21, brother. Okay, second Chronicles, uh, second Chronicles, verse uh, chapter two, brother. Thirty-six chapter, verse twenty and twenty-one. Ah, uh, second Chronicles. Second 26. Chronicles after Kings, after Book of Kings. Ah, okay. Ah, uh, okay, okay, brother. Okay, now, okay, just, uh, just a moment. Okay. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, yeah, it's written like this in verse 1. 
twenty. In them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were serving to him and his son until the re regain of the kingdom of Persia. Continue. Uh, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah until the land had in enjoyed her Sabbath for as long as she lay disloyed, she kept Sabbath to fulfill three scores and ten years. You see? Huh? Yeah. The Lord took uh, the people of Israel huh? you see, captivity to Babylon. Why? Because the land may enjoy her sabbaths. Until a land may enjoy, not people may enjoy, land may enjoy the people, not sabbaths. Because the people of Israel did not give rest to the land. Hence, they could not keep this law perfectly. So, what does the Bible say? As long as the land lay desolate, you see, she kept her sabbaths for how many years? 70 years. So, 70 sabbaths was actually fixed for the people of Israel. But hence the people of Israel could not observe at all. Okay. Now, you see, what lesson is there for us? You see, what is the Jubilee? 49 plus 50th year. The 50th year is called as a Jubilee. Now, in God's plan, where do we see this one? You see, God created man. You see, for how many days for the? What is the creative days? How many days did God take to create? Uh, seven days. Very good. Six days God created, seven day he rested. Correct now? Now what is the period of each and every creative day? Uh, every creative day? Uh. Mm. Uh, mm. 24-7. 24-7. Okay, good. Read. Genesis first chapter, Genesis first chapter, verse um, 14, 15, 16. Okay, Genesis first, verse 14, 15, 16. Okay, brother. Hmm. It's written like this. End. God, God said, let there be light in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for day and years. Oh. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, he made the star also. Ah, so greater light he made to rule in the day, the lesser light he made to rule in the night. Now, which is his greater light, which is his lesser light? Sun and moon. Very good, the sun and moon. So, on which day did God create? Read verse 19, brother. <clears throat> In the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Ah, the evening and morning was the fourth day. So if the fourth day God has created the sun and the moon, that means before this uh, there was no sun and moon to express days and nights. Then how can you tell it is a period of 24 hours? When sun and moon is created on the fourth day, how can you tell that the previous days were 24 hours or, or else how can you say it is 24 hours Without the moon, did Adam any have any watch? No, Adam was also not there. Oh, now tell me. Now, how do you say it's 24 hours? Hmm? Means if the sun and moon is there, we can say 24 hours. If sun and moon is not there, how can you say 24 hours? Correct, no? Mm -hmm. Before, yeah. Yes, then how? Actually, this creative day is not 24 hours at all. It's like a 10,000. It's like a thousand year, brother. Ah, uh, I'll tell you. Read verse 19 again. In the evening and the morning with the fourth day. Uh, evening and morning, it says not morning and evening. Correct, no? So, this yeah. itself is a clear proof. It's not 24 hours at all. So, this day, the creative days, 
is actually a period of 7,000 years each. How many years, brother? 7,000 years each. 7,000 years. Yeah. Here now, is. how do you say, how do you calculate? Is there any proof? Yes. So, God created for six days and rested on the seventh day. So, if you calculate the period of the seventh day, we will come to know what is the period of, of the previous six days. The seventh day, you see, I hope you have calculated and we have shown to you that it is a period of 7,000 years in the Bible chronology class. I hope the class is over for you. If it's not over, we'll, Ashish Peter will try to take it. Okay? But I think it's over. We are given the notes also. In that one, where we are clearly prove that from the creation of Adam till 81 is 4,128 years. And from 81 till 18, 70, eh? two is a period of uh, 1874. It is a period of uh, 6,000 years total. Therefore, so this seventh day, we have calculated and shown it is a period of uh, 7,000 years. That means each and every creative day is also a period of uh, 7,000, 7,000, 7,000, 7,000 years. How? Oh, in the 7,000 years, first 6,000 years was evening. But the last 1,000 years, where the 6,000 years work of creation, you see, which was very dull and vague, it came to perfection in the last 1,000 years. So, hence, 6,000 plus 1,000, 7,000 years. Okay. Now, God created for how many days? Huh? Six day and rested on the seventh day. So, 7,000 into 7 years, uh, 7 days, how much it will come, brother? 7,000 years into 7 days, how much it will come? 49,000. Very good, 49,000 years. So, <coughs> the end of 1,000 year reign of Christ, the 49,000 year ends. And since then, the 50th thousand year, <coughs> the grand jubilee actually begins. So, it is during this 49,000 year, that is the sabbatic year, and the 50th thousand year, that everything will be restored as it was mentioned in the law of Jubilee. Read Acts 3rd chapter, 21st verse, brother. Acts 3, 21. Okay, brother. Whom the heaven must receive on, until the times of resituation of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. Very good. You see, whom the heavens must receive. You see, Jesus must be in heaven. Until when? Until the time of restitution of all things. So once the times of restitution of all things comes, you see, a time comes to restore everything back to normal as it was in Garden of Eden. Jesus should return back. So, if Jesus is returned back, then that is a sign that everything will be restored back to normal as it was in the Garden of Eden. So, this is what God has spoken through all the prophets. That means the entire Bible is actually about God's kingdom. So, dear brethren, for this restoration process, uh, the law of Jubilee is a beautiful picture. We'll see how it can, you see. Uh, see, what did Adam lose? Adam lost the perfection in the Garden of Eden. He was cast out from God's presence. You see, but in Christ, what will happen? All mankind will be restored back to fellowship with God. Isn't it? You see, Adam lost that world, that earth, that kingdom which God had given to him. And Jesus purchased this kingdom and is going to give back to mankind. Read Matthew 13, 44, brother. Verse 44, brother. Yeah. Okay. Then he said, I will return into my house from Whence I came out. No, no, no. Matthew, yeah. Matthew 13, 44. You can read from the screen. If it's possible. Matthew 13, 44. Okay. Uh, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure, treasure hide in the field 
the which when a man had found, he hid and for joy thereof goes and sell that all he has and buy that field. You see, so here he says the kingdom of God, heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field. A man, when he finds the treasure, what did he do with himself? He hid the treasure and for the joy, he went and sold what all he had and what did he buy? He did not buy the treasure, you see, but he bought the entire land it seems. This is what Jesus did. Jesus saw the treasure of mankind hidden in this earth and to purchase mankind, he gave his entire life, he poured out his blood. And what did he purchase? He did not purchase only man. He purchased the entire land, the entire world is purchased by Jesus Christ. Hence, this world will be restored back to mankind. And the first thing you see that is going to be restored is life. You see, man lost life. This life will be restored back to man. Not that as soon as a man dies, he will go for judgment, he will go to hell or heaven. No, dear brethren. All that are in the graves, you see, shall hear his voice and come forth. The resurrection will happen for the each and every mankind who ever lived in this earth. Read 1 Corinthians 15, 21 and 22, brother. For since by man came death, by man came also the re re recreation of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. You see, for since by man came death, uh, by man came also the resurrection of life. As in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive. So in the thousand years when everybody comes back to life, you know, even the age will be restored back. Now, as the age goes on, 30, 40, 50, the beautiful, you see, and the image of man, the looks of man gets very wrecked. But in Christ's kingdom, this will be restored back to original perfection as they were day living in the days of your beautiful young. They will be restored back. This is the jubilee. Restoration back to perfection in which they were. Read Job 33rd chapter 24th verse. Job 33, 24. Then he is gracious unto him and said... <laughs> Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the day, days of his youth. You see, I have found a ransom. His flesh shall become fresher than a child. That means he will restore back, return back, you see, to the days of his youth. And his flesh shall be fresher than a child is himself. You see, that means everybody will put a baby soap in Christ's kingdom. They will be so beautiful. The beauty of mankind will be restored. And not only the beauty, even the health condition. Adam, did he have any sickness or any pain or any sorrow in Eden? No. Similarly, no one will be sick in Christ's kingdom. Isaiah 33, 24, Buddha. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people that do will throw in shall be for, forgiven their in, inquiry. See, the inhabitants shall say, uh, not that uh, I am sick. Nobody shall say, I am sick. The inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. All their sins will be forgiven. You see, that will be restored back. Now, how was the condition in Garden of Eden? Did uh, animals quarrel with each other? No. How are the animals in Garden of Eden? They were all pure vegetarian. So similarly, this condition also will be restored back in Christ's kingdom. Animals were playing with man. You see, 
that uh, insanity you see that uh, actually uh, will be restored uh, in Christ's kingdom. Isaiah 11 chapter 6 to 9 brother. Isaiah 11 chapter 6 to 9. The wolf also shall deal with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kids. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed their young one <laughs> shall lie down, uh, shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat its straw like the ox. And the, and the shocking child shall play on the whole of the alps, and the wind child shall put his hand on the cockroach's den. Then shall not haunt nor destroy in all my holy mountains. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the water covers the sea. See, the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Even all the wild animals shall be turned vegetarian. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain because the knowledge of the Lord shall cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. It seems the beautiful condition of Eden shall be restored by the earth. Entire earth will be made like garden of Eden. Isaiah 51, 3 brother. For the Lord shall comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving, and the voice of melody. You see, the wilderness shall be like Eden. Edenic condition will be restored back. So in Christ's kingdom, an Edenic condition is restored back. What will you see, happen to the people. You see, where will they stay? You see, each and every person will be having a own house. Nobody will live in a rented house, but rather everybody will be blessed with their own house. Read Isaiah 65, 21 and 22, brother. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build an another inhabitant. They shall not plant an another eat. <laughs> For as the days of a earth, the days of a tree are the days of my peoples, and my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. You see, and they shall build houses and inhabit them. But not that, you see, they shall build an another inhabit. Uh, you see, so they will be you see, huh? staying in their own houses. Nobody will be staying in rented houses. Each and every person will be having their own houses. So, my people will be, you see, inhabiting there in eternal peace. Okay. Now, what will happen there? God will wipe away everybody's tears. You see, everybody, when they're resurrected back to life on this earth, what will happen then? God will take away each and every pain, each and every sorrow. You see, there shall be no more death at all. Death won't be there in Christ's kingdom. Read Revelation 21, 4. Brother. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. See, neither shall be any more pain, no crying, no death. So all the former things, you see, shall be totally gone away. So that means whatever there is there in the second world, it will totally go away. And all the things which will be there in the first world, which was there in the first world, will be restored back. Okay. Now for this jubilee, you see, what was the, the beginning? Huh? You see, to proclaim this jubilee, you know, 
there was a trumpet that was blown so the people may be alert people may awaken and realize that they are in the jubilee and they may restore back whatever is rightful for other people you see uh, the proclamation of the trumpet was made so similarly you see uh, when will the trumpet be blown you see in the bible we have read uh, there are actually seven trumpets in revelation 7 chapter and 8 chapter we read no uh, there are actually seven trumpets so jesus returns actually when the seventh trumpet is blown first thessalonians 416 brother read first thessalonians 416 Okay, brother. First Thessalonians 4 16. Okay. Oh. <laughs> First Thessalonians 4 16 is written like this For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the death in Christ shall rise first. Ah, with the trump of God. This is the trumpet sound that Jesus will return with. This is the seventh trumpet. Read Revelation 11.15. Let us see what actually happens when the trumpet is blown. Seventh trumpet is blown. Revelation 11.15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and for his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Ah, you see, when the seventh angel sounded, imagine the seventh angel sounded the seventh trumpet, what happened? The kingdoms of this world, you see, became the kingdoms of our Lord. The kingship was transferred. See, when the jubilee trumpet was blown, what happened? Everything was restored back to the original owner. So, similarly, when this trumpet, the seventh trumpet is blown, you see, the kingdom rights, which was there with the devil, will be restored back, you see, to our Lord Jesus Christ. This is what happened in 1874. And Jesus will reign forever and ever. You know, as soon as the kingdom is changed over to Christ, what will happen in the world? What will be the reaction of the world? Read 18th verse for the same chapter, verse 18. Brother. Yeah, okay, in 18 it's written like this. And the nations were angry. And the worth is come huh? in the time of the... See, it says the kingdom is transferred to Christ. When everybody <laughs> should be happy, no? Once when the kingdom is transferred to Christ. But here it says the nations were angry and God's wrath is come. The nations are not happy, you see, because Christ has taken over the kingdom. First of all, they are having quarrel upon their own party only. Where will they arouse Jesus Christ to rule? That is the reason the nations are angry. We are living in this period where the Jubilee trumpet is blown. You see, so many people are awakening to the rights and the nations are angry. You see, therefore, the trumpet, you see, the blowing of the trumpet, what is it? It is actually the blessedness of knowledge, the enlightenment which God is giving to the entire world. See, when the trumpet was blown, everybody senses were awakened. So similarly, when Christ returns, actually he returns with a trumpet and the light, knowledge and understanding. Read Revelation 18, 1, brother. Ah, okay, Revelation 18, 18, 1 is written like this. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power in the earth was lightened with his glory. Mm, you see, a great angel came down from heaven, having great power. This is our Lord Jesus Christ who is having the power of uh, heaven and earth. Everything is given to him. And as soon as he came, what happened? The earth was enlightened. Light came, brightness came. That means the people were uh, 
increased in knowledge. That's what we read in uh, when we read about the signs of Jesus' second coming. Daniel 12.4. You see, what happened? Uh, the knowledge shall increase. You see, man shall run to and fro. Uh, take for example your Japan. You see, Japan is so much uh, increased in knowledge. And uh, you see, man running to and fro. Uh, you yourself are a proof for that one. That uh, today we are living in a sophisticated world where knowledge has drastically increased. This is the sign of the jubilee. Uh, awakening. Uh, not only awakening in Bible knowledge, but people realizing their rights. Uh, you see, people realizing the liberties. Everywhere you can see, people are fighting for the strike. Uh, you see, fighting for the rights. Uh, doing revolt, strikes. You see, organizing, gathering the people. You see, why? They're standing for the rights. So you can see the example of Hong Kong, brother. Just a few years before, what happened? The entire Hong Kong city was in the street. Why? They fought against the government of China for their rights. You see, that is the awakening. This awakening is given by our Lord Jesus. It is a beautiful sign of the Jubilee. So these are the signs of the Jubilee where people are realizing their uh, you see, preferences, their own liberties, uh, they want it, uh, they want their rights, uh, they never want to let it go. You see, so that is uh, the awakening of the Jubilee. See, in Jubilee, what happened? Whenever the Jubilee was blown, the people realized uh, it is their right. So we want it. They came for it, uh, they fought for it. Uh. So before Jubilee, who was happy? The rich were happy, the poor were sad. But in the Jubilee, when the trumpet was blown, what happened? Uh, the rich were, uh, you see, so sad. But who became happy? All the poor, you see, they were happy. So similarly, when Christ's kingdom comes, when this jubilee trumpet is started to blow, people will rejoice. You see, how will the people rejoice? The people will rejoice that everything will be made, you see, equal. There will be no rich, no poor. Today we can see, you see, there are rich and poor in financial matters. But when it comes to justice, there is no forgiveness for anybody. Lord, it may be very rich person. Today, the justice is same for everybody. Let it be Blink Clinton, let it be Vijay Malia. The justice is the same. There is no change in justice at all. Read Isaiah 24, chapter 1 to 4. Isaiah 24. Behold, the Lord make the earth empty and make it waste and turn it upside down and scratch abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priests. Ah, wait. As with the what did he say? He shall make the land waste, turn the land upside down. You see, few years before, many years before, how was the justice? One who was rich, he had one justice. The one who was poor, he had another justice. But today, Justice is equal for everybody. It says, it shall be with the people as it was with the priest. See, just go a few years before. How was the world condition? There were three classes. Priest class, the very first class people, the priest and the holy people, uh, all these people were there. And last, uh, the people, you see, were very low, were uh, untouchables, uh, who were working very low class. But today, there is no differentiation among religion, caste or creed or color in this world. Everybody are equal. Continue with the next. Huh? As with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress and with the buyer, so with the sellers and with the lender, so with the borrower and with the taker of ansari. So with the giver of answer to him. Ah, you see, it should be the same. It should be both the same with the lender and the borrower. You know, today, the people, what do you see, photos, no? the people have borrowed a lot of heavy, crores and crores of rupees from bank loan. They defaulted and ran from India. You see, but today, the scale of justice is so that uh, it is equally treated as you treat a sum culprit in a local court. There is all, no injustice at all. Everybody are same today. Therefore, it says, as it was with the, you see, buyer, so it shall be with the seller. As it was with the lender, so it shall be with the borrower. Everything shall be made 
fertile. Everything shall be made flat. No high, no low, nothing. This is the special of Jubilee. You know, on during Jubilee, what happened? Those who bought the land, they were supposed to return back. Those who sold themselves, they were restored back. Freedom was given, liberty was given to them. The same way. Then, what happens with that? Huh? The Lord shall be utterly emptied. The land shall be utterly emptied. For of all this ego, you everything, everything, it shall be emptied. And that is the time, dear brethren. Jubilee was a grand celebration in Jubilee, Israel. They used to feast a lot. You see, they used to celebrate uh, Jubilee. So similarly, and, uh, and God in Christ's kingdom restores everything back to mankind and bring them back to the Edenic condition. The whole mankind will rejoice in the Lord. They will be very happy. Read Isaiah 25, 6-9 and in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees will refined. And he will destroy in his mountains the feast of the covering cast over all people and the will that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death in victory and the Lord God will weep away Tears from off all faces and rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the hmm. Lord hath spoken it, and it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. You see, he shall swallow death in victory. Then the people will realize and claim from them out, this is our God. He is the one God which we have waited. We have searched and worshipped so other gods in different, different, uh, you see, way. But once they realize his blessings in Christ's kingdom, they will say, yes, this is our God who has restored us back to the perfection in Christ's uh, kingdom. Therefore, what did Jesus taught us to pray? A Father which art in heaven, you see, thy kingdom come. Hmm. They will be done in earth and it yes. is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth, brother, as it is done in heaven. The same way where in heaven there is no sorrow, pain, sickness, anything. How God's will is perfectly done in heaven, everything will be done on earth. This is the great grand jubilee. You see, dear brother? Okay. So please go through the notes, uh, brother Mosam. Uh, any doubts, any questions you have, brother Mosam? No, no doubts, brother. Yeah, thanks for the time you have given to us, me in this BG. Ah, I think my video is on. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. At least we could see your face. This is the first time I'm seeing you. Ah, really, brother? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I never seen you. Ah, okay, yeah, it's okay. I will show my face. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I have long hair before, uh, before a week. Oh, uh, I hold it off my hair. <laughs> yeah, I, I got my hair. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Good, uh, Brother Mosam. Uh, nice uh, learning the classes. Uh, so, any questions you have, you can ask, Brother. Any questions you have? Yeah, I got I got today's classes very well. Yeah, being yeah. on the train also, you just uh, make a time and uh, present the materials. I am so happy for the time. Uh, okay. You are so comfortable. Yeah. He made the situation comfortable and thank Good you for enough. this. And as uh, I come, I just got it about the chapter of uh, Jubilee. Yeah, I'll, I'll again, I will uh, go through it and I will read it again. Okay, okay, brother. Okay, uh, then we'll end with a word of prayer. So, any questions you have, we can discuss with the Ashish also. So, we'll uh, yeah, you okay, in brother. Own language. Okay, okay, brother. Yeah. God willing, we'll see you. Huh? Yeah, okay, thank you so yeah. much, brother. Thanks. Okay, can you end with a word of prayer, uh, Brother Mosam? Okay, brother, yeah, let's, uh, let's pray. Thanks, our Heavenly Father. Thanks for this wonderful time and opportunities that you have given us today to learn the word from the uh, Bible. We learn about the Jubilee. Uh, that I wasn't, uh, I was, I wasn't got this knowledge before, but by your help and uh, the presence. 
of you, Lord Jesus, you have given me this wonderful opportunity. May your will uh, be fulfilled by me, be upon us until I will, until we mix, meet our next classes and next week. Uh, until then, uh, be until then be upon us in all the circumstances in the uh, tax we will be doing. Thanks in the name of our Almighty Lord. I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Master Brother. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah. Thanks for the Thank time. You. Yeah. Not less. Bye, Shifu. Yeah.